To be a great beach getaway, a region has to excel in two completely different ways. One, have a variety of entertainment. Two, also have beautiful nature and services to explore that nature. The former usually means big crowds, while the latter means getting away from those crowds. In the coastal Carolina region known as the Grand Strand, there is Myrtle Beach city limits, and as we saw in our previous video, there is plenty of entertainment. But then, there is what we are going to show you now. The coastal areas to the north and to the south of Myrtle Beach that gives you so many opportunities to enjoy the nature. In this video, we will start at the North Carolina-South Carolina border in the community of Little River, where you can experience many activities on the river. Waterfront dining, a variety of boat rides, a casino cruise, a new cable water park. We meet up with Captain Bill and Captain Jack on a cruise in Tiki. Ride the Sea Screamer up the Intracoastal Waterway to the Atlantic and view many dolphins. We'll show its sister boat five miles down the Intracoastal, the Sea Thunder. Give you info for pontoon and jet ski rentals. And further down the river, the Super Voyager for a fishing charter or dolphin cruise. We head south to Cherry Grove Beach with a really nice pier. Then drive along Main Street in North Myrtle Beach into the ocean at Myrtle Beach Park. We then jump 25 miles down the coast to the region of South Myrtle Beach, Surfside Beach, and Garden City Beach. Then to the Myrtle's Inlet Marsh Walk, a folksy boardwalk with waterside eateries, a beer garden to chill and enjoy the nature. We show express water sports where you can rent pontoons, kayaks, paddle boards, jet skis, or take banana boat rides, dolphin tours. We'll take you on board the Visit Miro's Inlet boat tour and follow another popular boat ride, the Pie-Eyed Parrot. We cruise around Goat Island to the barrier island of Garden City Beach. On the other side of the inlet, we hop on a bike and travel along the shoreline to the super long jetty at Huntington State Park. We end our 53-mile journey of the South Carolina coast on the pristine beaches of Polly's Island. So come with us back to the Grand Strand. Breathe the fresh air. This time, we show you the nature of Greater Myrtle Beach. Starting at the KOA where we stayed at while filming both Myrtle Beach and Greater Myrtle Beach. As Traveling Robert would say, good morning. Was centrally located, so it was an easy 35 minute drive to Little River to the north or a 30 minute drive to Merrill's Inlet to the south. See our first video for more info on this KOA. Just recently started drinking mushroom coffee. Love this rise. Good for traveling as you just mix it with water. They even have a healthy powder creamer that is good as well. Just love it. It really gives good natural energy. I'm not getting paid by Rise. This is just a free tip. Because I care about seeing people make healthy choices. That way you feel good while you're traveling. Okay, we begin our journey at the North Carolina, South Carolina border in Little River at the Cricket Cove Marina. This is a great kind of old style fishing village with several waterside eateries. So you can enjoy before or after your boat tour or fishing charter. Right next to the cruise and tiki's is crab catchers, literally right on the river. The only way to get a better view would be to take a cruise and tiki. I'm Captain Bill, this is Captain Jack. We're Captain here Jack. at Cruise and Tiki's Myrtle Beach. We're here at our Little River location. Uh, what we do is a BYOB cruise. We have a couple different cruises running from eight in the morning all the way till six sunset at night. Uh, it's a BYOB. We provide ice with cooler cups, shot glasses, water, we got music as well, all that jazz, and we bring good vibes. It's just a great time being out on the water and relaxing. We cruise, you booze. There's also long line fishing charters here. Next to Crab Catchers is Key West Crazy, with seafood steaks, cocktails, with live music on a rustic patio. Cricket Cove Marina is also where the Big M Casino Yacht sails out of. The cruises are $20 per person, with the exception of Saturday evening cruises, $30 per person. They run 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday, with evening cruises on Thursday through Sunday. 
This is South Carolina's only casino with card games, three card poker, roulette, and slots. Subs, wraps, pizza, and hot dogs are available on board. Next to the Sea Racer and Sea Screamer is Scully's Tavern with burgers, tacos, and seafood. The Sea Racer offers a 90 minute dolphin tour aboard a speedboat. It is $28 plus taxes and fee for adults and $18 for children 2 through 12. Myrtle Beach Water Sports has two dolphin cruises. The one that departs from this marina is the Sea Screamer. They also have the Sea Thunder that departs four miles down the river in North Myrtle Beach. As a result, if your goal is to see dolphins, I'd recommend the Sea Screamer, as it is a shorter trip to the ocean. However, if your goal is to see more of the intracoastal waterway, the Sea Thunder might be better for you. With both cruises, if you don't see any dolphins, they will give you a second cruise for free. It is $29 for adults, $19 for kids 3 through 12, and seniors 60 plus $24. There is currently a 4% fuel surcharge added. We did this in late April, which is when you start seeing a lot of dolphins in the Atlantic here. On the right is where Inlet Point Plantation offers a one hour waterfront horseback ride for as little as $60. That is one big island called Wadey's Island, South Carolina. On the left is Bird Island. We are just about 400 feet from the North Carolina border here. We take Highway 17 over the Intracoastal. On the right is where the Sea Thunder docks at. On the left, another boat tour, jet ski rentals, and waterfront eatery. Captain Archie's with seafood and sandwiches, seating right on the Intracoastal. And in front of Captain Archie's is the Southern Shores Island and Dolphin Cruise on a catamaran. It's $35 for a two hour cruise, ages three and up. Also here is Aloha Water Sports with parasailing, banana boat rides, and jet ski rentals. They also have a two hour jet ski dolphin tour. On the other side of the bridge, you can rent pontoons and jet skis with Myrtle Beach Water Sports. They also have a two hour jet ski tour for $219. The jet ski can hold up to three people, up to 400 pounds total. If you have your own boat, you can park your trailer under the bridge and drop in the water at the Johnny Causey boat ramp. An eatery on this side of the bridge. Filet's waterfront restaurant with hand cut steaks, seafood, and a sushi bar. Another mile and a half down the Intracoso is where you can board the Super Voyager 3 for both fishing charters and dolphin cruises. The dolphin cruise is $33 for adults, $27 for children 3 through 12. They have half day, 12 and 24 hour fishing charters. Shark Wake Park 843 is a water sport cable park in Little River where you can do water skiing, wakeboarding, kneeboarding while being pulled by a cable. It is $36 for two hours or $56 for an all day pass. There is also Obstacle Island, a floating obstacle course with slides, climbing towers, and monkey bars. $27 for 50 minutes, an eatery for cold drinks, coffee, ice cream, and snacks. Six miles east of Shake Wake Park is Cherry Grove Beach, located in North Myrtle Beach. Cherry Grove Beach was named the best beach of South Carolina two years in a row. Parking is limited here, a little lot, fills up quickly on weekends in the summer. The Cherry Grove Fishing Pier, one of the longer piers of South Carolina. Admission is $1 for sightseeing. Fishing is $3 plus $7.50 per rod. Cleaning stations and cutting boards on the pier. Features a two-story observation deck, a taco shop, and the Boardwalk Beach Cafe for seafood burgers, Jamaican jerk chicken. Also an ice cream shack for milkshakes, smoothies, and hot dogs. The Prince Resort, a three-star hotel located at the base of the pier with two pools and a jacuzzi overlooking the beach.
two miles down the coast is Main Street of North Myrtle Beach. This is a one mile stretch dotted with bars, shopping, and restaurants. It has a laid back small town atmosphere. One of the most famous clubs is Fat Harold's, known for its shag dancing, which began in the 1940s as a fun social dance to beach music. Across the street is Duck's Nightlife, a beach club, bar, and grill sidewalk cafe with regular live music. This area gets pretty lively and busy on weekends. Parking can be a little scarce, so come early. At the end of Main Street is OD Pavilion Sunset Grill and Arcade, with more shag dancing with live music and DJs. Thursdays, May through September, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., is Music on Main, an outdoor concert series that features local musicians at the Main Street Horseshoe. Admission is free, just bring a lawn chair and snacks. Now we start to head to the South Strand part of Greater Myrtle Beach. But on the way, breakfast at the Kind Belly Cafe. We showed this health food cafe in our first video, but it was worth a second stop, this time for a healthy omelet with organic veggies and goat cheese. Also for lodging, again the Westgate Oceanfront Resort is a great place where the kids can enjoy the Family Kingdom amusement park across the street while you and your significant other can get away to these nature areas north and south of Myrtle Beach. Now south of Myrtle Beach in Surfside Beach. This was an area that was hit hard by Hurricane Matthew in early October of 2016. Most of these homes have been rebuilt. About half of the Surfside Pier was washed away. It is also being rebuilt and set to open by the end of 2022. The Surfside Beach Oceanfront Hotel located at the base of the pier. Across the street is the Gracious Pig, an authentic pit smoke barbecue in a neat, rustic, old service station themed building. The Wild Waters and Wheels Amusement Park with tube slides, wave pool, go-kart track, and mini golf. For the water park, it is $27 for those over 4 feet tall and $17 for those under 4 feet. Add $10 for the full park admission, which includes unlimited go-karts, bumper boats, and mini golf. We turn off the of Business Highway 17 towards Garden City Beach. Plenty of vacation homes line North Waccamaw Drive. You see the Surfside Pier way in the distance. It's two and a half miles south of that is the pier at Garden City Beach, which many call the best pier in South Carolina, located eight miles south of Myrtle Beach. There is a rain shelter on the end of the pier. Also has an outdoor bar with live music. Fishing is $9.50 for adults or $4.75 for kids 12 and under, but no admission to the pier for walking. The coastline of Garden City Beach leading to Murrell's Inlet, Near the edge of Garden City Beach, just inside the Murrells Inlet city limits, is Inlet Adventure Golf. With a Groupon discount, it is about $11 for two people, $16 for three people, and $21 for four people. We now head to probably what has become the most happening place on the South Strand. The Murrells Inlet Fishing Village Marsh Walk features a half mile long boardwalk along an estuary lined with lively eateries with live music. One end of the boardwalk extends way out into the water. The other end winds around the marina with several waterfront restaurants overlooking the waterway. At nighttime, the lights come up with the sounds of live music. There's Wahoo's Fish House and Raw Bar, or fresh inlet seafood and sushi options. There's the family-friendly Dead Dog Saloon and Restaurant with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a large screened-in patio or outdoor deck. You got to try their inlet egg rolls or blue crab nachos. They are really good. There's Bubba's Love Shack for fried seafood and other American grub. There's the Claw House with lobster, oyster bar, and a beer garden. And yes, the Marsh Walk is pet friendly. Meet Charlotte and Buttercup, perhaps distant cousins of Bella. <laughs> Express Water Sports gives you a variety of ways to explore the nature of Murrell's Inlet. Paddleboard and kayak rentals, guided and self-guided tours. You can paddle around Goat Island that is just across from the boardwalk. 
They also have jet ski rentals, eco tours, banana boat rides, pontoon rentals, $3.99 for a half day or $4.99 for a full day, parasailing, fishing charters, and dolphin tours. All right, guys, can't wait to take you out there in the open ocean there for our 90-minute uh, dolphin ocean sightseeing cruise. Where we set sail, we head out to the open sea and try to find all sorts of wild animals, including our sea turtles, our seabirds, our dolphins. Uh, really a beautiful way to see the Grand Strand from the ocean. It is $28 for adults and $20 for children under 12. Cruise and Tiki's Myrtle Beach also here. $65 for a public cruise or $250 if you would like to charter the whole Tiki for up to six people. If you would like to get some cardio on your cruise, try the Inlet Brew Boat, $25 for a public cruise, or $325 if you'd like to charter the boat up to 15 people. One of the most popular cruises is the Pie-Eyed Parrot Happy Hour Cruise with a full bar and appetizers available. It boards behind the claw house. It is $25 for lower deck, $30 for upper deck. The duration is three hours. You party at the dock for 90 minutes, then cruise for another 90 minutes. There is a restroom on board. Must be 21 and older. For kids, try the Visit Marrow's Inlet 90 Minute Pirate Cruise. $29 per person, ages three to adults, and $14 for toddlers two and younger. We are gonna take the Visit Marrow's Inlet one hour sunset cruise. It is $25 for adults, $16 for children, three through 12. Toddlers two and younger, $5. It sails through the saltwater marsh estuary of Murrow's Inlet, viewing wildlife, then sails along the barrier island of Garden City Beach. These homes on the Intracoastal side, around $2 million. There's the UFO house built in 1976, designed like that to help withstand the hurricanes. Several of these houses were built in Florida. This is one of the few that remain. On the ocean side of the island, these homes valued at around $4 million. And look at the south end of the barrier island of Garden City Beach. On the other side of the inlet is Huntington State Beach, which we will bike on to the jetty in just a little bit. A gorgeous sunset over Murrow's Inlet. Now south of the inlet, we arrive at Huntington Beach State Park. Admission is $8 for adults, $4 for youth 6 to 15, free for children 5 and under. This park's wetlands are inhabited by sea turtles, alligators, and rich bird life. The Kerrigan Nature Trail has long boardwalks over a lagoon, and there's also the Sandpiper Pond Nature Trail with viewing decks to see egrets and herons. On the south part of the park is the Adelia Castle, a vast 1930s Moorish-style castle, was home to the Huntingtons who once owned this land. There is camping here, RVs up to 40 feet, with electrical hookups, Wi-Fi, and showers and restrooms. The beaches have ADA crossovers. We are going to bike back to the inlet area that we just showed you by boat. It is about a mile and a half each way to the jetty, a three mile round trip. The beach for the most part is hard packed enough to ride a bike over, at least with a mountain bike. Some parts of it got a little soft. Then once you get to the jetty, I think it's probably another quarter of a mile out to the end. This is a long jetty. But it is worth it, as there are not many people here, but lots of nature. On the other side of Highway 17 is Brook Green Gardens, with a sculpture garden, a wildlife preserve, and low country zoo. It is $20 for adults, $10 for children, 4 through 12. There is also a creek excursion by boat that you can take. It is an additional $10 for adults and $6 for children. Now at the south end of our journey, we arrive at Polly's Island, located 25 miles south of Myrtle Beach and 70 miles north of Charleston. 
Good fishing around the North Causeway Bridge. There is public parking along this road that bears to the right from the causeway after the bridge, near Polly's Island Nature Park. There is a nice pier here, but not open to the public, unless you are staying at the Polly's Pier Village. Polly's Island is a mix of shabby chic homes and cottages, preserved natural areas, ideal for quiet getaways. Surfing is popular, especially on the north part of the island. The only place you can't surf is within 100 yards of the pier. Being that most of the island is residential and private, parking can be a little scarce. I'm putting a link below for beach access parking. The north end of the island is private, therefore we are headed to the south end of the island. While there is not many public areas, it is still a nice scenic drive. If you don't like corporate ties beaches, this is the place for you. Even the few businesses that are here, they blend in with the residential historical look of the island, like the Pelican Inn, an oceanfront bed and breakfast. The biggest public parking lot is on the south end of the island. I have my Timber Ridge beach cart, so convenient for areas like this. I can just throw all my stuff in the cart, including Bella, and travel along the sand. I put a link in the description below. While there are cheaper carts, this cart is very durable. I recommend it. Swimming is allowed here, both in the creek and in the ocean, but it is advisable to stay away from the far south end because of dangerous tidal currents. This is just a great place to experience a half a mile of completely unspoiled, pristine beach. I also have my Kurgle Dog backpack that allows you to take your dog pretty much anywhere. Again, I'll put a link below. Well, this is our final spot on the Myrtle Beach video. After we filmed this, we headed to the Poconos, Pennsylvania. That video has already been posted. 53 miles from Little River to Polly's Island. So you see, Myrtle Beach is not just all craziness and crowds, but it is also gorgeous nature and pristine beaches. Gives you so much variety for both the amusement seeker and the nature lover. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Greater Myrtle Beach in the comments below. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. If you would like to purchase stock footage from us, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Or if you would like to hire us to film your region or area, email us as well there too. Next, we head to Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Alabama. And then back to the Emerald Coast, Pensacola, Florida. I just want to say thank you for all your tips in helping me to create both Myrtle Beach and this Greater Myrtle Beach video. I so appreciate your tips and your comments. From the Palmetto State, I wish you blessings to you, wherever you may be. See you on the Gulf Coast, in sweet home, Alabama.